Okay, so back in the 90s, uh, Mayor Susan Golding had proposed an idea that would create a canal from the San Diego Bay to the Mission Bay. Uh, so you could kayak or take a, a small boat from one bay to the other. Um, that idea basically died out until the late 90s uh, when there was an advisory committee that resurfaced it. And then it fizzled out again. Well, recently, uh, one of the important pieces of that, which is where the canal would exit um, to the San Diego Bay, um, is being changed. The, the ownership is being transferred from the, the military to the city of San Diego. So as the discussions are ongoing about the midway redevelopment, uh, this idea of a conceptual canal between the two has resurfaced. So um, at this point, it's still a long shot, but um, essentially it's, it's about as possible as it's ever been. So interesting to keep an eye on that to see if it gains any sort of traction. It'd be about 50 feet deep, 75 foot wide. Uh, it, in the at the deepest end and 100 feet wide at the shallowest end so definitely would be interesting to have a waterway connecting the two bays especially for smaller recreational craft so keep an eye on that uh, san diego unified may be offering affordable housing for its teachers uh, there is a 3.2 billion dollar bond on the ballot this year for residents of san diego unified's boundaries it's called measure u um, 200 million of those 3.2 billion would be set aside to create uh, more than uh, 500 affordable units on school district property for educators and staff. So it's an interesting concept for um, the district to start in providing housing for its employees. Um, retention is obviously a big issue in, in a lot of different uh, municipalities, including the school district. We'll talk about another um, agency that's having trouble with retention later. Um, there's been a study that from realtor.com that shows how much you need to get a starter home across the country. And in San Diego, the, um, you need to make $187,000 a year, um, household income in order to afford a typical $670,000 starter home. So, um, even then, I don't know where you find the $670,000 starter home, but, um, that's the income you need to qualify according to realtor.com. So. You made the news there. Also record high gas prices for the fourth day in a row. Um, so uh, it's amazing how much uh, gas I did. My empty light turned on yesterday and I was shocked to pay seven bucks a gallon, but record high fourth day in a row. Uh, the downtown businesses have seen a huge boom um, when the Padres actually uh, making a run for and, and securing a wild card berth for the playoffs. Um, some other teams in California secured that playoff spot long ago, but good for the Padres and <laughs> businesses downtown who have seen that boom. Moving on, um, yesterday the the city of San Diego and the county board of supervisors ha held a joint meeting at San Diego State. It was like the first time in over twenty years that a meeting like that had been held, and the. Focus on it, it was a housing summit. Uh, they approved a resolution to expand housing by 10,000 homes. Uh, their idea is to build homes on government owned land. The San Diego Housing Federation had a study that they presented that, um, that broke down all the different properties owned by the county and the city that would be ideal for development. Another takeaway is they they agreed as a region that there needs to be a greater focus on more high rise construction. Obviously we have limited land. So going vertical is, is also another way to, to get more housing done. Um, other, other ideas from that meeting were also making um, fewer rules and less red tape. Obviously something that gets in the way of anybody trying to build housing is how difficult it is. So. Um, we'll see if anything actually happens. There was a lecture last week at San Diego City College where uh, people gathered to standing room only crowd to learn about low riders at San Diego City College. Uh, I was called demystifying the, um, the stereotypes. I actually participated myself and it was uh, definitely an interesting conversation. Um, 
administrators were hesitant to bring that onto campus and by the end of it, they wanted to do more. So it was interesting uh, and you know, conversation. Moving on, um, San Diego opened up the application process yesterday for short-term vacation rental licenses. So anybody who is looking to operate a whole home Airbnb type rental or on any other platform for that matter, uh, the application window opened yesterday. Priority will be given to those who have a history paying the, um, the tax and, and having their, their home registered. Uh, additional points will also be given to the amount of years that you've already been operating an Airbnb and several other things that give you priority. So best way to describe it is like when they do the, the, um, the lottery for NBA draft picks and there's several little balls in the thing with different teams names on it. Um, the more boxes you can check off, the more entries you get into the lottery. So it doesn't mean that you have to have any experience to, to get in there. And if you're lucky, you can get a license with no experience. The odds are just better if you have experience and you've been doing things right as far as paying taxes and uh, registering as a business with the city, uh, et cetera. So windows open uh, for all tiers. Anyone, whether or not it's a whole house rental, can start the application process now. Um, the categories are part-time, home sharing, whole home, and Mission Beach whole home. Uh, Mission Beach got its own carve out with a little more um, allowed for the area than the rest of the city, uh, since there was already a lot of existing home rentals to begin with. The wage of the city will increase to $16.30 effective January 1st. The tenant protections from COVID are expiring in the city. Um, so, some renters are concerned and some landlords have, have been stuck in a, in a tough situation, um, but they did just phase out September 30th. So those landlords who have been stuck have options and those tenants um, who have been utilizing the protections are obviously in a tough situation as well. So that's an update there. And an ongoing, uh, this is going to be the, the final left before San Diego City Council turns 100% uh, Democrat. Uh, the difference is that uh, although both candidates running in District 6, Tommy Howe and Kent Lee uh, definitely have um, distinguished each other over their, um, their view on housing and construction. Um, I think uh, that Kent Lee has uh, positioned himself more pro-housing and, and Tommy uh, Howe has positioned himself more and protecting the uh, the communities as they are, uh, which is going to be a big issue, um, especially because homelessness is is pulling at the top concern, housing at the second top concern, and um, we'll see where where the cards land on this one. But um, either way, votes are Democrats with distinct views, but uh, the council will finish um, that conversion next year. Uh, more on that right there. Um, those of you looking to get a contract with the city, they are looking for a real estate expert. I've joked many times as updating all the different real estate scandals the city has that they need some better advice. Well, they must have heard me because they're looking to hire somebody to give that better advice to the independent budget analyst. Uh, they want somebody who can analyze all their commercial deals. Um, and see if it makes sense for the city from a, a very uh, practical standpoint and not a um, just sign on the dotted line and trust me standpoint. So that they are looking for, for contracting uh, professional um, real estate advisor to advise them and on these big real estate deals of hundreds of millions of dollars. So opportunity for anybody out there with uh, experience and know how to analyze those types of deals. Moving on. Several schools across uh, the city are going to be testing a pilot as community schools. There's five schools that, including Hoover High School, that will be uh, in the pilot program and another five, uh, including Sherman Elementary, that will be in the follow-up uh, year two program. The idea is to bring more resources and provide wraparound services, uh, healthcare, mental health care, um, and other um, after-school programming. Um, and basically making sure the, the school 
is connected with the surrounding community organizations uh, and this new model called the community school. Um, as I mentioned, five schools are, are getting it started and um, other five are, are lined up. It's a $3 billion partnership program through the state of California. Uh, and if it is successful, it will expand uh, into other schools around the district. I already mentioned Padres clinched the playoff only the second time since 2006. Nothing to see there, moving along. Um, uh, front page Sunday of the newspaper was about, um, they, the UT did a research study about what zip code, cash, LLC, uh, big Wall Street type investors were buying in. And um, you see a photo there of, of, um, of City Heights. And also um, you can see that a local realtor was featured on the front page um, based on uh, some comments given for the article. So front page news. Moving along, the best taco spot in the country is in the city of San Diego. It's called Ed Fernandez Restaurant down in the Nestor neighborhood. A very unassuming looking spot, but apparently if you don't get there early, they sell out every day. Um, they're open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, a few other spots were um, the Cabeza, which is a spot in Chula Vista that sells Cabeza tacos, which is the head of a cow. Um, and also another uh, seafood place, Mi Gusto Es, which is on Home Avenue. Uh, they placed number 15 on the list. Um, so. And the talk with El Gordo was uh, number 41. So we had four, four local uh, taco spots make Yelp's top 100. La Jolla High School is celebrating 100 years. So happy centennial, um, La Jolla High School. And uh, the Housing Commission did receive a $7.5 million grant from Wells Fargo uh, to increase home ownership for people of color. The Housing Commission is now going to work with an advisory group uh, made up of diverse organizations, uh, including NAREB and NAREB and ARIA, to come up with ideas on how those 7.5 million will actually be used to increase home ownership. Um, but it, um, it is, is pretty open-ended, which is cool. A lot of times they have already kind of put them in a box. It's required for down payment assistance or whatever. But in this case, um, the, um, the, the committee will, will help advise on that. As of last Saturday, it's for the whole month of October, kids will get in free at over 50 county museums and other um, amusement parks around the, the county. Um, so anybody with kids or awesome information to share with your client, uh, it'll include the new Chicano Park Museum that will be opening this weekend. Uh, they have their grand opening I believe, on Saturday. All the museums or most of the museums in Balboa Park, the Museum of Us, the Children's Museum downtown, the Air Museum, um, and I believe also the zoo and Legoland are also offering, and SeaWorld are offering some sort of admission. You can go to the San Diego Museum Council website to see further. I'll copy that and um, put it in the chat. 50 police officers have quit since July, says the police officer union. I talked earlier about how retention is a challenge um, with the school district. It's also a challenge with the police department. So. There's 1,800 sworn officers, 50 have quit since July. So definitely significant. Um, but the main reason that most are leaving is that other areas are giving them more money or they're retiring elsewhere. And finally, uh, Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs was the subject of some surveillance in the Chula Vista mayor's race. Uh, one of the candidates uh, hired surveillance to follow around his opponent who is dating uh, Representative Sarah Jacob, and she has responded that she has contacted law enforcement and they will be investigating privacy issues there. And that concludes the city update for today.